In this first lesson on Grade 11 Statistics, we are going to start off with ungrouped data by revising what you already know from Grade 10. Statistics is a division of mathematics where large quantities of data is collected and then analyzed. This analysis can then be used in many different ways, of which one is helping you with decision making. It can also be a good motivation for the decisions that you've made. The analysis and calculations that you've learned up to now can be divided into two groups, measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. In this lesson, we are only going to have a look at how to calculate these measures for ungrouped data. Ungrouped data is when you receive the raw data values. Measures of central tendency are calculations that result in a single value that summarizes the data. This then gives you the average tendencies of the data set. These measures are the mean, the median and the mode. The mean is calculated by getting the sum of all the values and dividing that by the number of values and that is then simply your average. The median is the value exactly in the middle of a data set. Here it is important to remember that the set should already be ordered either in increasing or decreasing values. The mode is the most common value and this means it is the value with the highest frequency. The measures of dispersion tell us how the data is spread or how much the data values differ from each other. These measures are the range, the interquartile range and the semi-interquartile range. The range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum value. The interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. Q1 is the value that indicates to you where the bottom quarter of the data set lies and Q3 is the value that indicates where the top quarter of the set starts. Lastly, we then have the semi-interquartile range, which is simply half of the interquartile range. The measures of dispersion are calculated using only two values out of a full set of data values. That is why in grade 11 we are going to have a look at new measures that takes all the values in a data set into account. Next, we are going to have a look at two examples where we are going to calculate these six measures. Example 1 has an odd number of values in the data set. Here we are given 11 values. To calculate the mean of the set, we are going to add up all 11 values and then divide this by 11. This means that if we wanted to make all 11 values the same size, all of them would have been 11,64. The mode is the most frequent or most common value, and here that is 5. Next, we are going to determine the median. Here the data is already ordered, so we can immediately go and determine the value exactly in the middle. Because we have an odd number of values in this data set, there will be one value that is exactly in the middle. Firstly, we need to get the position of the value exactly in the middle, and that we do by taking the number of values, 11, and dividing that by 2. Here we will get 5,5, and that means that the sixth value will be the one exactly in the middle. The value exactly in the middle is then the sixth value, which will be 10. Here we've now seen that the mean as well as the median are bigger values, values 10 or bigger, while the mode is only 5. And so it's clear to see that the measures of central tendency are not accurate enough to use to make good decisions. When I now continue to also calculate the measures of dispersion, I'm going to start off with the range. The range is the maximum value minus the minimum value, and that will give us a range of 18. This means that there is a difference of 18 between the biggest and the smallest value in the set. Next, we want to determine the interquartile range. For this, however, we first need to determine Q1 and Q3. 
The median can also be called Q2, and this value divides the set of data into two halves. Next, we are going to take these two halves and halve them again to calculate Q1 and Q3. Our bottom half consists of five values, and that means that our value exactly in the middle, when we take five and divide that by two, we will get two and a half, which rounded will give us the third value. That means that Q1 will have a value of five. Similarly, if we focus on the top half of the data set, we will once again divide the five values into two halves and focus on the third value, which means that Q3 is 17. The interquartile range is then Q3 minus Q1, and that will give us 12. Lastly, to determine the semi-interquartile range, we simply take this interquartile range of 12 and we halve that to get 6. In example 2, we are given the same set of data, but there's an added value of 22, and that means we now have 12 values in our set. When I calculate the mean, I will then have 150 as total, divided by 12, which will give a mean of 12,5. The mode here is still 5, but when we calculate our median, it is now important to realize that there will be two values right in the middle. To determine the position of our median, we are going to take our 12 values and divide that by 2, and this will give us the sixth value. It is now important to realize that this sixth value will be the last value in the bottom half of the set. Directly after the sixth value, the median or Q2 will then divide this set into two halves. The value of the median will then be exactly between the value 10 and 14, and that will give us a value of 12. The range of the set is still the biggest value minus the minimum value. And here, because the added value is the maximum value, we now have a range of 19. For the interquartile range, we once again have to first calculate Q1 and Q3. For Q1, we focus on the bottom half of the data set, which has six values, and that means that Q1 will be exactly between the third and the fourth value, and its value will then be exactly in between 5 and 8, and will then be 6,5. For Q3, we will focus on the top half of the set, and once again divide it exactly between the third and the fourth values, and that means the value will be exactly in between 17 and 20, which will give us a Q3 of 18,5. Our interquartile range is then the difference between Q3 and Q1, which again will give us a value of 12. Therefore, our semi-interquartile range will again be half of 12, which is 6. So here we had a quick recap of the most important calculations you learned up to grade 10. And in the next lesson, we'll have a look at a new measure, which is standard deviation.